Good day, most lovely viewers. This is Nation Voice Tower. I'm Angelo, your anchor. All right. I would love to uh, really not waste your time. The political scene in Nigeria has uh, been into com or has been thrown into confusion for uh, the uh, co past couple uh, of days. All right. And um, it's not only centered in river states. Okay. There are lots of things happening in the background that you and I need to check. All right. Because from analysis, if these things are not brought to our notice, we wouldn't be able to, you know, uh, understand what Bola Ahmed Tenobo and his um, cabinet are up to. Okay. Now, countless number of times Bola Ahmed Tenobo, who has been engaged in going on different journeys under the pretext of, you know, um, going to represent the country in different summits, conferences, all over the world. We have no problem with that, all right? Attention over time has been drawn to the extravagant spending, or let me say, the uh, the lack of prudence in, you know, uh, the dealings of Bola Ahmed Tenobu and his uh, cabinet, all right? We saw the situation in India when uh, he traveled for the African summit in New Delhi, India, and we knew what played out. We knew or the the results or uh, the uh, compilation of all transactions made for hotel rooms and all delegates spent food eating welfare and everything in india in new delhi was available in the public space and we all saw that all right we saw the whooping number of delegates that nigeria took to the united arab emirates in dubai for um the um, the, the, the conference or the summit on climate change that took place just a few weeks ago, all right? Nigeria had one of the largest number of delegates that came for that summit, ranging to a whooping number of one over 1,400 delegates from one country. This shouldn't come from a country that is really planning to cut the cost of governance, all right? I have spoken about that countless times. Now, the World Bank has raised an alarm on incoherent transactions, especially emanating from the uh, NNPCL, okay, that is um, the uh, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, all right. Now, the NNPCL over time has been a sector in the Nigerian economy, talking about oil that has been drawn to the attention of the president countless times people have told him to probe the activities of the nnpcl but he has failed to do so maybe because he has something to do in um, that sector or he has something to benefit in that sector to that effect this particular report hitting my table few a few um uh, minutes ago i beg your pardon is calling out the presidency all right the World Bank have issued a report raising alarm over the lack of transparency in Bola Ahmed Tinubu's government, especially pertaining to oil revenue, subsidy removal gains, and um, other, you know, um, irreconcilable transactions. Now, the World Bank is opting to speak about this or to give a report on this because the same World Bank have been responsible for issuing out the detailed records of transactions that have been undertaken by Bola Ahmed Tenobu within the short period of time he has existed as president. All right. So this particular expose, though short, would explain what incoherence the oil revenue has, according to the World Bank report, and what issue has been called for uh, the subsidy removal gains. There are incoherent transactions and irreconcilable amounts of money that have gone down the drain that the World Bank feels the president should know and explain for. A recent Nigerian development update from the World Bank expresses concern over the lack of transparency in the Bola Ahmed Tinubu led government and the Nigerian National Petroleum Commission Limited, NNCPL, regarding oil revenue and the proceeds from the recent fuel subsidy removal. Sources further gathered that the report notes nominal oil revenue gains since June but emphasizes a lack of clarity on the NNPC's financial gains from subsidy removal, 
ongoing subsidy arrears deductions and their impact on federation revenues. The World Bank also questions the stagnant retail petrol prices since August despite exchange rate fluctuations and global oil price changes. In October, the Nigerian federal government announced a notable increase in the country's oil production, reaching approximately 1.7 million barrels per day. This goes further to represent a significant surge of 6 million barrels per day from the recorded figure of 1.1 million barrels per day in August 2023. All right, welcome back. That was the expose. Okay, um, the World Bank is trying to say the oil revenue and um, its deductions, especially the end point, that is the cumulative revenue, has um there are issues okay pointing at the fact that the federal government is having a foul play in the deduction of oil revenue and even in the imposition of uh, oil revenue okay yes now um the world bank in its report also said uh, there are you know non-reconciliable transactions from the subsidy removal gains the amounts of money that have been gained over time after subsidy uh, removal where are they okay because if you'll remember sometime when um Bolatinibu was uh, was sworn in now he announced on that swearing in day that fuel subsidy had gone with immediate effect but the previous government of president Mamadou buhari paid for the subsidy according to information available in the public space up to june ending all right month end of june all right so what happened to the amount of money that had been already paid to take care of the subsidy in june these are one of the reports that the world bank feels should be explained or the president should be held accountable for not just the president but the hierarchy of the nigerian national petroleum corporation limited nnpcl starting from mele Kiari, the md of the nnpcl the head of the DPR and um, other oil or petroleum affiliated sector. All right. So this should serve as a wake up call to this sector and also to those involved in governance, especially um, from Bola Ahmed Tenobu down to the oil sector. I think they should have things to explain on the reasons why the World Bank has this report uh, raising alarm over incoherent and um, lack of transparency in oil revenue and subsidy removal gains as well as other transactions in the oil sector now in the viral video i have nyesom wiki talking about the apc in the most inconsistent and um, unpleasant manner all right i will say by this video nyesom wiki the present minister of the federal capital territory shot himself in the leg by these statements all right now these statements were not only um were not only directed to the apc but to all its members all right and the politicians under this particular platform please watch this video then i'll tell you what i think about what nation wiki said the present controversy in river state right now and how these two are linked stay tuned defect or come out from pdp come on go where things we change we don't see it happen i again. get uh malaria my cancer the fine why they talk like that? I get malaria. Where they easy to treat? Now I want my go cancer. Why go die immediately? Which party? APC. I'm not going to talk like that. Party where don't kill Nigeria. Where are we going? Where are we going now? Every fight where they fight my PDP, I go fight them there. If they win me, they win me. If I win them, I win them there. I need to run my body there. I may not send them to win me. I will not there. I will fight them there. But to leave PDP, where get malaria? Go APC, where get cancer? Ha. Come and the state of the cancer, where they for APD, uh, APC. Now the fourth stage, where they say, doctor, they talk say it they hard. If I want, they say now first stage, make it call God. Say okay, it don't happen. When I hear people declaring for APC, saying that they want to continue the good job of Mr. President, the good job of people dying every day, the good job of Naira falling every day. 
feel so ashamed that we have gone to the level where sacrificing people will come and say, Look, I want to continue the good job of Buhari. What is the good job of Buhari? Of hunger is a good job, of poverty is a good job, of insecurity is a good job, of the economy falling is a good job. It's such a shameful thing. I, I can't believe that somebody will come out in today's Nigeria and say, I want to continue where Mr. Buhari has stopped. May God forgive. May God never allow. All right, um, yes, on Wiki. According to Nyeson Wiki, in that video, he doesn't support um, any cancerous political party. According to him, he can't leave the People's Democratic Party. He was asked if he can actually defect to the APC because of his um, recent dealings then. Uh, they were pointing at the fact that he was planning to support the APC in things he was doing, even pre-election period. All right. Now... For the records, for the records, there were comments in the uh, in my last update, uh, whether or not if I was uh, supporting Nyeson Wiki. Please, I am not in support of Nyeson Wiki. Neither am I advocating for whatever he is doing to Sim Fubara in River State. I am of the utmost and sincere opinion that Nyeson Wiki should let things be and allow sleeping dogs lie. In River State, because I think right now, as far as PDP is concerned, as far as the People's Democratic Party is concerned in the state, Sim Fubara, who is the governor, is the leader of that party in that state. So, I would not love Nyeson Wike to meddle into the affairs of um, the People's Democratic Party because he's, he's just left with a step to be called an APC member. I think he has defected just... Um, in his mind because um what is left is physical defection all right now i am not in support of nelson wiki or whatever he was doing whatsoever all right now this viral video showing wiki calling apc cancerous has um really gotten to me you know why now wiki might actually go further to lose the river state battle between himself and his godson um sim fubara now if care is not taken wiki might become the laughing stock did you know why? Let me give you a brief explanation of the reason why. Now, sometime in 1999 and 2000, something happened in the Enugu State, in the Enugu State political scene. What happened? Chief Jim Wobodo, who was a very, very strong chieftain then in Enugu State, brought about the emergence of the then governor of Enugu State, Chimaroke Namani. Chimaroke Namani was his godson as far as politics was concerned in the state, all right? But over time, there was controversy in the second year of Chimaroke Namani's reign as governor of Enugu State, all right? This controversy brought about um, the House of Assembly in the state, um, division in the House of Assembly in the state. Let me use that word, all right? Now, just like in the, in the case of River State, almost half, if not more than half, of the lawmakers in the House of Assembly in Enugu State at that time we are in support and very loyal of Jim Wobodo, just like what is happening now in um, River State, where almost 27 lawmakers in the House of Assembly are very loyal to Nelson Wiki. Right now, against almost five or six that were uh, in support and in loyalty of the then governor Chimaroke Namani. But to the utmost shock of Jim Wobodo, Namani presented his budget of the next year to the few lawmakers that were very, very um, loyal to him and it was approved and to his utmost dismay, to the utmost dismay of Jim Wobodo, these few lawmakers, five of them or six of them, ended up impeaching the large number that were loyal to Jim Wobodo, all right? What am I trying to say? The lessons of this is the governor is the governor. He is the owner of the state. He has the final say, all right? Only the lawmakers who are very, very loyal to him will see the limb light. What am I trying to say? Don't forget that the Speaker of the House of Assembly in River State presently is loyal to Sim Fubara. So he, he adamantly submitted the budget and it was approved. So I am even thinking um, that there might be a twist in front. In my next update, you're going to hear about that twist, all right? So with this viral video, I think um, that should really refresh the minds of Nelson Wiki because he has 
finally shot himself in the leg and he might lose the battle in River State. Now, news reaching our table, third update for you, says two of the 27 River State lawmakers who actually defected from the People's Democratic Party few days ago, this should make it the third day of their defection to the All Progressive Congress, have returned. Two of these 27 lawmakers have returned to the People's Democratic Party. <laughs> That means they have actually returned the millions of naira or dollars that they allegedly received for their subsequent defection to the APC. All right. Now, this could only mean one thing. Okay. First of all, it could actually prove to be a, mis a political miscalculation from these two lawmakers of the PD of PDP descent. All right. Because they must have realized their mistakes and defected back. To the People's Democratic Party for reasons they will soon explain to the people. Don't forget that makes it 25 now for Nelson Wiki and making it 8 now for uh, Sim Fubara. The number is coming up. These people must have seen something. Please, I have somebody who will throw more light on this recent redefection. Let me use that word recent redefection to the PDP. Uh, one uh, Mr. Debo Olongba. Debo Olongba, of course, you know, is the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Please, stay tuned. It's, like you said, it's becoming like a circus. But I need to make a correction. They're no longer 27, they're 25. Mm. Two had yes, I understand the two pulled yeah, out. They have to yeah, pull yeah. out because they recognize the futility of this venture. Mm. And this is a venture that I have christened uh, what I call it's a, a journey of regret, like a voyage of regret mm. and political miscalculation. You mean for those defectors? Absolutely. Right. And so that's why you see them coming back. Well, you've seen two come back. Yeah, because they have, they, they know that. Yeah, but you've thought, still got 25 you know, who haven't they, come back. What, yeah, well, they, well, I know because when you get into a gate that is automatic, that is shutting at you, mm. if you don't get out of, away from the door, the door will shut down. So I, right now, what has happened is that the seats of those that defected are vacant. That is not me saying that. That was the Constitution provides for. Mm. In section 109, subsection 1G, the proviso there is that you cannot defect to another party if you are elected on the platform of one party. Because in any event, there are no independent candidates in Nigeria. Yeah, but the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, mm -hmm. the former governor of Verbonia State, Dave Umar, he, yes. they both defected. Okay. So, I mean, is there anything that suggests that this is going to be different? With okay, let, let, let's say this. And then, and this is the clarification we need to make. Right. Constitutionally, that's one of the reasons why in this democracy, we must begin to develop it more so that people can be responsible when they are elected. For the governors, there are no provisions in the, in the Constitution. Mm. So they can't, they can't defect, as it were, and then get away with practically murder. But for a legislation, a, for anybody who is elected into their parliament, and you defect from the party that sponsored you, mm. then Section 109 for the State Assembly gets you. For the House of Representatives and the Senate, Section 89 takes care of you. Right. So there, the governors have that kind of... Okay, <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Um, um, things are getting so interesting in the political scene and I would not really, um, I would not, well, I wouldn't play down the possibilities of anything happening within, the, within now and the next um, four years because politics in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria, is filled up with lots of drama kings and um, unpredictable people. Maybe that's what politics is all about, unpredictability, right? So let us see how far this controversy will go. But for two people, two lawmakers to re effect to the PDP, there are plans on ground to make things happen. And I would not be shocked if Nelson Wike is disgraced at the till end. Because the governor, I repeat, the governor of River State remains the governor of River State. As long as he has been duly elected and confirmed by the various stages of the election tribunals, that means he is actually the governor of River State. And the people of River State have owe him the responsibility to be very loyal, okay, especially when it comes to situations like this. 
he has already begun work. He has demolished uh, the House of Assembly complex in River State and he is still doing more. Let us see where all these things would end. Please, before I say quits, don't forget to like our videos, share them. Please drop a comment for us in the comment section so I will know your reactions to these videos. And if you're watching me for the first time, please tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you will see me promptly and on time. See you next time. Bye.